never known you to fail You remain the same man Wonderful is your name On the my life I've never known you to fail You remain the same man Wonderful is your name
God, mighty God, mighty God. Jesus, my heavenly Father watches over me. Mighty God, mighty God, glory to God. A wondrous day in the house of God. We give him glory and we give him praise. Because only he alone is worthy to be praised. Let me welcome each and every one of you in the house of God today. Glory to God, those online visiting friends. We welcome you in worship today. Glory to God, it's time for the word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Our heavenly Father, he watches over us. Mighty God, it is a joy to be gathered here together in the house of the Lord today. And we are truly blessed to share in this moment. Glory to God, this moment of worship and reflection as we prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word. I have the privilege of introducing a very special servant of God who will be leading us in today's message. Bishop Desinet Whitecliffe Anthony Freitas Sr. is a faithful leader, a compassionate shepherd, and a voice of wisdom in our community and internationally. He has dedicated his life to serving the Lord and guiding us in our walk with Christ. We are continually blessed by his commitment to teaching the word of God, nurturing our spiritual growth, and leading our church with love and grace. Oh, glory to God, so without further ado, Please join me in welcoming our pastor, Bishop Desinet Whitecliffe Anthony Freitas Sr. and the Holy Ghost as he brings the word to us today. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody magnify him, somebody glorify him, somebody bless his holy name. Glory to God, the songwriter said, I am determined to hold all to the hand. Jesus is with me, on him I can depend. For I know I have salvation, I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold all to the hand. Determined to hold out to the hand. Jesus is with me. On him I can depend. For I know I have salvation. I feel him in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the hand. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder. You are precious, more precious than gold. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that close by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Brighter 
oppression, oppression, like gold. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what, what a wonder. songs that you just sit and sing. That, I mean, we, 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 even earlier we're singing in that great triumphant morning. We also sang Kneel at the Cross. And, and, and those were songs that we would never comfortably sit and sing. Because the truth be told, when you have the knowledge of what you are singing about, when you have the knowledge of what you are saying, it was it was in no way a song that you could just sit or if you even stand up with a stand up one place and no no that that that's not a song that you do that to in other words we are doing injustice to the praise of god let me say it one more time we are doing much injustice to the praises of god because if we were to come into the house of god and to praise god which means whatever we now do when we come into the house of God is unto him. You, you, you never sit and do it. All right, let, 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 me, let me say something because, let me say something because I, I, you, you're forcing me to get into my message and I haven't yet started. But you remember, take a seat, sit, sit. Let, let me see if I, forgive me, I'm a bit orthodox. As the Holy Spirit leads me. When, you, when we read earlier, Isaiah chapter 6. We read Isaiah chapter 6 earlier and we have been looking at Isaiah chapter 6 for a few weeks. And for those of us who have read the book and maybe spend some time to listen to what the Lord is saying, there can never be a casual response to God. So, why do you say? You see, one of the things I know that in this season I'll be criticized for is to be prompting people to serve God. And then persons are going to say, Sir, I mean, that's not how I fellowship. That's not how I praise God. Now listen to this. Everybody have their different ways of worshiping God. But then I want to go on record and to be criticized to let you know that's not how it goes. Let, let, me, let me just say, let, let the Lord and so it go. Why we should not pump anyone and push them to serve God? And, 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 and we are saying in, in, in a particular context, which means I will not hold the service up to force you to praise God. But it is still my response and my duty to encourage you to praise the Lord and to let you appreciate what it means to praise Him. So let's, let, let me see if we can start, so, so, so start again. So then, when it is that you come into the presence of God, there is one thing that he requires. And, and let me tell you, it no matter who you are. So if you tell me, say, boy, but yes, sir, but, but, but that's not how, I, I mean, me and God have a relationship, and that's not how, I'm going to tell you, and I saw it go. I'll be rude enough to you to tell you that's not how it goes. If not everybody had their own different ways of fellowshipping. We have coined these kinds of, of quotes and have said this kind of thing because we want people to be comfortable you know, in what they do. But can I tell you, praise have an expression. Praise have an expression. All right, let me, let, let me challenge you to let you know that the concept of saying everybody different we are serving God is wrong. Let me challenge you. If you go into the police force, there is one way to salute. Yeah, 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 don't like me. 
there is a march that everybody has to march that way you're in the army there is a particular way it is not but sir you know yeah but then i don't i don't you know my, I, based upon my orientation i don't salute like this the devil is a liar if you want to be in the force your father the instruction of how to salute your father said and to how to march to comply but 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 and what's it and if it is that we follow the secular we are what is everybody's now trying to you know their own way of serving the one god so so, so even if you went into the police force and and what you you, you have an orientation i'm not being expressive you need to understand whilst you get in there the training that you will get will guide you and teach and if you want to be in the force you come out of the style that you say you did have and comply with the one that they now have in order to be a part of but but we are creating a kind of a doctrine a kind of religion a kind a kind of, I, 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 I mean i'm making everybody to have their own expression I know y'all don't like me. But, but when we do this, an expression comes on to God. We are not honoring him for who we really supposed to be because we are putting our feelings over honor. I know I get myself in trouble. We, we're putting it where we feel over the over honoring God and say that he understands. That's a lie. That's a lie. No wonder when Isaiah gave us the glimpse of him. Isaiah said in the year King of the I saw the Lord high and lifted. But you know, see God high and lifted up, no? High and lifted up. And his feet trained filled, sit, sitting on a throne. And his train filled the table. Isaiah was looking at God, establishing and making mention of a God who was his, who he realized no matter wh what position he's in right now. He has to see God for who he is. Let me explain. If, if Isaiah served Uzziah and Uzziah now died, Isaiah might have been in mourning. But if you are mourning, you better be able to still see God. And see him in his rightful place. He saw him seated on a throne and his train filled. Don't tell me you're mourning so you can't see God. And we put our feelings over service. And we are building that kind of a religion, that kind of a practice. And so much so, what we are doing, we are not honoring God for who he is. Because we are telling our feelings that is more pronounced than the God whose presence we are in. We are telling our feeling that you are preeminence over the God who sits on a throne and desire worship. And I want to be on record and you, you all can criticize me whether you're online or in the church. Because I want you to know the truth concerning God. You can, you missed the text. Everywhere in scripture we read it and we have seen it. You never go before the king with an ugly face. And that's an earthly king. And it's, it's only an expression for you to know the heavenly king. Everything you see about the king in the Bible with an expression is only a reflection of what the true king is. And in the year king of that, either that I saw the Lord seated up on the throne, high and lifted up. I, you, you, I, thought, I thought I heard you might have said something this morning that I'm about to bring to the fore. If you notice when Isaiah gave the glimpse, talk about what happened in heaven, there was only one seat. There was only one seat in heaven. One seat he identified. And that was a throne. So there was only one person seat. I mean, I'm in the wrong church. All right, let me see if I can assume I'm getting on. When he spoke about what he saw in heaven on the one seat he mentioned and that seat was a throne 
and it was only one person seated. Where do we find such comfort to claim that we come into the presence of God and we are so comfortable that we have to be begged to praise him? But the angels show us how we were to do it. They had six wings. With two they cover their face. Two they cover their feet. And with two they fly. Let me explain and tell what's happening. One, the two that they cover their face with, they are expressing humility. Lord God. Because, watch this. As, watch this. Anytime you hear about God, you hear about glory. And when you hear about glory, you hear about light. Let me say it again. When you hear about God, you hear about glory and you hear about light. And what is there were heavenly beings, Sister Mickey? What's this within the realms of heaven? And even though they were, what's this? What's this? They were fiery beings and they worked in heaven, yet they could not contain the glory of God that they had to be veiling their face. They're working for somebody they can't even look in their face too tough. Let, let me tell you because you, you miss it. There were fiery beings. Seraph means fiery. They were on fire. Which means, and God is a God of fire. A God of glory. So they were on fire. Number one, you cannot serve a God of fire. And you know the power of fire. You all force me. You can't serve a God who is on fire. You don't want to fire yourself. So, so, so you already, that's why they are fiery beings. Because it cannot be anything less. If God is a God of fire and a God of glory, how can you so cool serve a God of nothing? Can't go so. If you go serve him, you see, there's a difference with being a, visit, a spectator than to be a player. There's no requirement to be a spectator. Save on alone, save on the sideline. But there's that rule when it comes down to you being a, a player. Please understand, seraph means fiery. Because you cannot be anything less serving a God of fire. Which is suggesting you have to be on fire to serve a God of fire. And when you show up where the God of fire is, you have to be on fire if you want to be in the presence of the God of fire. So where do we get that kind of practice from? Because what we are trying to make, what, what we're doing is that we are making God less than who he supports. No wonder why we are not able, brothers and sisters, to do great exploit. Preacher, why do you say, keep reading the text and it will happen. The seraph, they were shouting, holy, holy, holy. Fire. The who that were on fire were worshipping. Let me help you. If you think there are going to be chairs in heaven and you can be comfortable at all about how you feel, you, 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 please, you, I don't think you plan to go there. But the last time I checked, prayers never end in glory. Let me say it one more time. I said the last time I checked, prayers never end. We might finish in the next 45 minutes and go home, but prayers never end. God, praise no end in glory. It keeps on going on. And it keeps on going on. So, so, so watch this. So watch this. Let me tell you. So, so, so then the seraphs, the two women cover their face. So please imagine, they are serving a God of fire. And they are on fire. But yet they have to veil their face. With two, they cover their feet. We speak to humility again. When we then on the bar spread it, I be humble. Me not just do what I want to do. Me not just go, me not just come, you know. And then we two they fly. All right, they fly when they fly. What? Let me help you. you 
sometimes it's being depicted in movies that you see a, a, a bee. He's standing one place. He's not moving, but you see him stopping. I, I'm, I'm trying to help somebody here. He, he's not going in the way, you know. But, but, but in order to maintain the balance, the wing has to be moving. I, I, I want to see what happened with the angel in heaven. Because the angel is a micro waiting on God's instruction to carry out God's assignment. So they're not what is so they're not moving, going about doing what they want to do. Tell somebody they're on an assignment. And so what you I want to get, get a picture. So then with the wing that they were flapping, but Bible said with wing there, with two wings they flew, which means no, they were there standing by for the errands from God. You, you still miss it. I saw so prove it in the text. So, so, so watch the text. So watch the text. So, 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 so they were on fire, serving a God of fire. Let me tell you then what happened. Because the other verse now told us that they began to show one to another. And they were saying, holy, holy, holy. But then the text says something else. Because with, with this shout of holiness, brothers and sisters, hear what the Bible says. When are they shout holy? And they cry holy. The text says, in verse 4, the post and the temple shake. I want to forget one. All right, I, I, I might need to go back up and then I come back because I think I missed it somewhere. There were fiery beings in the presence of God, serving a God of fire because they cannot be cool. And there were so much on fire that they were shouting holy and holy one to another, showed holy, so that the post at the temple, you still miss it. The post, brothers and sisters. Happens to be one of uh, uh, happened to be one of those columns that would have held up a building. No, let me create an image and tell you this: you will never find God's temple built. Watch this with any error. It will not be built weak. It will have to be built strong. But the Bible says when they were shouting, the post. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to find a church. There was no flaw in the construction. It was built according to standard. But when shouting began, they were on fire. Somebody shout they were on fire. God, the post of you. I wish I could talk to this church. So we need to get out of ourselves when we come into the house of God. And give God what he deserves. And if you're on a social media platform, the same applies to you. That they were shouting holy. And the posts are shake. Because they were on fire. You know, so if you create the image, there was no flaw in the construction. But can I tell you... We, when we start offer to God what belongs to him Jesus have mercy things around us will have to respond as we open our mouth when we are giving God what he requires when we are giving God what he deserves not what we come say we are going to give him and, but what he deserves things begin to shake I grew up in the church knowing that even if we don't feel good but it's the ones we start praise God not nobody can tell me nothing blood run through me vein too me eat food like everybody else so me know so we have similar feeling but things start change when we start give God praise and that me I tell you things start change so, so you don't come to church we have a quiet spot to sit down because right I don't feel so good. I lie you I tell. I'm, I'm, I'm in the wrong church. No, no, no. You don't come for now like a quiet spot because then, no, 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 no. You, you, you need to understand that when you come, in no a matter how you are feeling, you go and give him all the praise. Because I realize what praises can do. It's amazing.
But what is the reason why some of us don't get that deliverance? It's because we come, so we don't feel we have enough comfort of screws. And a lot of time the car with us come for the screws. But you need to understand no matter how you feel, give God his glory. Hold on. Because I know I sound insensitive to some people. But let me ask you what was more insensitive? That the, the prophet look and a man who couldn't walk and tell him to get up. Tell me now, what is more insensitive? Because if I speak like this, people talk about, oh, you can't go and pass because you never go through nothing yet. And, and, and I behave as if you are insensitive. Because we want to embrace certain feelings that all it does is keep us down. And, 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 and like the power of God is, is not effective. If the Bible said the effectual prayer of a righteous man, and much more the presence of God, if you can actually say you are in his presence. Because the effectual prayer of a righteous man, he's depending on God. So, the, so God's presence can do more than the effectual And you can't claim that you came into the presence of God and you just can't as I go through the motions. The devil is a liar. You need to understand something is attacking you. You are under attack even when you're in the house of God. God can't put him in an assignment of contempt and not feel good today. He ain't doing no feel good to them so they can't fly. He ain't doing no feel good to them so they can't. So who, 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 where you get that from? Because he wants to know who is more important. What's it? Your feelings are me. We, so, 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 so what's this? So, so, so we are, we are creating a kind of religion. That's losing the essence of who God really is. Because we are putting emotions and feelings over God himself. And say, but we know him understand. He don't understand. Hear what he said. I'm going to give a Bible. He said, come unto me. All he that have labored. And I will, and I will. So he still said, "Come." So how are you gonna tell me he understand? Are you not come? It's not in the Bible. God understand is not in the Bible. It's never quoted. But what we have created all of these little terminologies to support our feelings and to justify what we want to do. David, my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to a rock. Lord of mercy. No care me go friend. No, don't care me go home. Lead me to a rock. The last time David stayed home, he never feel so good and get himself in trouble. Y'all don't like me? When king should be in battle, when he should be praising, when he should be showing the might of God, he stayed home. Something, something did wrong, you know? Some had, had happened, but then he decided to stay home. Instead, he went to battle. So, no matter how you feel, go battle. Because me going guarantee you, if you don't go battle, you're going, you're going to find yourself doing something else. And 99% of the time, what you do is sin. Y'all don't, don't like me. My God, I'm in trouble with this church. How many sound Atkins to me at the truth, he dirt? 99% of the time, you'll get yourself in trouble. Because you were never in place. But the Bible said the angels were crying holy. And they said, and the post of the door move. What's this? At the voice of him. And of God moving, you know, and who are, who, are who then at the presence of God. I shout. Their voice move. All right. I, I, 
I gotta tell you this. You see, I've said it to you before, but you might have forgotten it. So let me remind you about something here. You see, a bomb that has been made, a bomb, watch this, even though the bomb itself will have things in it that can cut people, that can hit people, the most effective part of the bomb are the sound. Lord have mercy, you know what I'm saying? And the sound make the bomb so dangerous. So they have to pack the bomb with all of the material that's necessary to create the bomb. The because it is the effect that the sound really create that damaging effect. Are you still missing our Bible for you? When God told Moses, rather Joshua said, go down Canaan. Go down to go and give you the land. Their duty was to walk around Jericho wall. Every day, one day, one time. Six days they did, and the seventh day, he said, when you walk seven times, you need to make a what bring the wall down? The voice of the people. Somebody said I just said. It was the voice of him that cried. If you, if you forgot what Jericho Wall was, Jericho Wall was 40 feet wide. Two chariots could ride abreast. Two chariots. When we say wide, you know, but that the thickness of the wall was 40 feet. That two chariots can ride abreast, right beside each other on Jericho Wall. It was said to be impenetrable. It was not a bulldozer knock it down. And never jack hammer them use and a sledge at the voice of the people. And it's the voice of the people. God Almighty. No wonder why. Listen, anytime you're in the house of God and you can't say nothing, and the devil there your lap. See it and I lock up your mouth. Anytime you're in the presence of God and you, I, 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 you, you can't shout, me tell you, say you're under attack. Tell anybody this brother say it. You're under attack. Demons deploy you. Tell you. The, the can tell her. Church people still not get it. Paul and Silas was in prison. God Almighty. And as long as them go in them feelings up in a prison, them are up and lock door. So when you stay in your feelings and lock door, you are still upon. But I don't know what happened. But the Bible said at midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul and Silas open their mouth and begin to give God glory. And the Bible say that the prison door. So as long as you stay in your feelings, you will always have bad feelings. But at the voice of the people, prison door. I couldn't imagine that we're created because heaven down here. I couldn't imagine that when I win a lock up, you know, we're in a chain, in a look good. But God still deserves his glory. Lean over cinema, everything might know all you want, but God deserves him glory. A matter of fact, it's the best time to give God glory when all hell break loose. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 4. The post of the door move at the voice of him that cried. And then the text said, the host filled with smoke because when you start get God when deserve even smoke up the place you miss what I just said in other words when he spoke about the smoke and nobody has smoke no spliff at the presence of God God sure because he's getting in other words I heard the text said he inhabits the praise so then when the praise start go up if coming I'm host But 
if you want God to keep out thy house, no praise him. But if you want to be in habit, the praise him, if you give him glory. It had nothing to do with how you feel. But you got to understand when the king is seated up on his throne. All those who have the assignment, you better serve him. You better serve him. I know we're going through some things. But don't have this preacher to remind you. You better serve him. I know everything is not the way it's supposed to be. But when it comes down to God, you better serve him. I know that we have some struggles. We got some mountains. We got some valleys. But you need to know God needs to be. But we have limited God's praise based upon how we feel. It was never predicated upon our feelings. Can I tell you what it was about? Him. But we have made it about ourselves. So, worship has no renegade to us instead of God. Because I have to be in my best to can worship God. And if I'm not at my best, if I'm not feeling good, I can't do it. So it's no about us and not about him. Because I have to feel good first. I have to be done. I have to. And, and I have to. And I come before him. The devil is alive. H always come before I. But the angels were in his presence. And when they were in his presence, they had to cry holy. Have mercy. They were glorifying God. They are saying he's different man. But when you serve a God that's different, your attitude towards him is not like any other. When you serve a God that is different, holy, and the poor shake at the voice of him that cry. And the Bible said, and the house was filled with smoke. That speaks to the glory of God. That speaks to God coming down to rest. And then Isaiah says in the fifth verse, Woe is me. I am undone. I'm a man of unclean. I'm dead now. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Woe, I'm wretched. Because can I tell you, the angels were doing something that causes God to be so glorified. That Isaiah really realized where he was. And when he realized he was in the presence of God, because he see God in his splendor and said, Whoa, he said, Me filthy, me nasty. I didn't know I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. He said, I know, see the king, who's the Lord of hosts. And look up the next verse. The next verse said, Then what God did, He took an angel. I told that one of the serf, serfs are there standing by, waiting for instructions. You, you turn, miss it. You, you, you hear about animal get set? I saw the serf, them, 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 them flying, them, them ready, sit and make it. Ready. And, and, and when Isaiah made that confession, God. God gave instructions to one of them angels. And, and the angels flew down. And you that tongue. And took a coal from the altar. Not sure if I told the church why they, why they had to use the tongue. Because even though they were seraphim that they were on fire. Watch this. They were going to an altar but they were on fire. No, watch this. You got to understand because there's something about the altar that, this, that, that, that has something about a distinction. 
that they have to use a tongue. They were not allowed to touch the coal with their bare hands. Because the coal is holy. Well, and preacher, you're not trouble now. Explain it. I thought that the angels that were worshipping in heaven were holy. Yes, they were. But they couldn't touch the coal. And it's not because they're going to get burned. It's because that's what the coal represent. God Almighty. That they have to use something to hold it. And don't hold it with their natural hand. Because hold it with a hand will contaminate it. You're still missing this. Let, let me help you. Honey, when you eat the food, even though the food, let's say not cool, it's not very hot, but you can hold it with your hand. Why you don't hold it with your hand? You use a fork, not you. Are you my talking to girlfriend? You use a fork. Why you use a fork? You, your hand wash, you know. You sanitize your hand. But, but you still don't use your hand. You use a fork. Why? You have to use that tongue because this coal is holy. Because the coal is coming from an altar. And they took it and they placed it on his tongue. And after they were on his tongue, the text now said he was now told, Your sins have been forgiven. Your iniquity has been cleansed, been taken away. You are no purge. We speak to sanctification. And I told this church the only thing. Let me tell you, the altar represents Christ. It was a typology of Christ. That's why I couldn't touch with him, not with him be your hand. Lord, I wish I could talk. That's why I couldn't touch with him be your hand. Because the only thing that can purge you is blood. So there it is. It says your sins have been purged. Hold on. But, but can I just jump over into the next verse? Because something I'm in the next verse. Because after his sins purge, hear what he, 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 hear what what now says. A voice now he heard. And hear the voice. The voice asks a question. Who shall I send? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, you miss it. It was a hot coal placed on Isaiah's tongue. All right, the church missed it. Let me try it one more time. Let me tell you, I'm online viewers can't get it. It was a hot coal placed on his tongue. And now it's been purged. Now if a hot coal go on a tongue, go on it. Let me tell you what it does. You see, you got to understand, Peter, first Peter spoke about a rock. And this rock, but it, it, it served for two things. The rock can be a rock that crush you. And it can be a rock that delivers you. But when will the rock crush you when you're right? All right, let me go it again. The hot coal that was on his tongue, it never consumed him, but it puts him on fire. It sets him on fire. Preacher, why do you say? Because the next verse asks, who shall I send? And he said, here am I. I'm in the wrong church. Because when the cruel hit his tongue and when he was purged, I wish somebody's soul would be on fire. Because I suggest when the cruel touch him, he now be on fire. And then who shall I send to me ready? Because when it upon fire, God Almighty, you're willing to do whatever necessary. But you know why we church be a We're too cruel. Slap someone and say, you got to be on fire. Man, I wish somebody's soul would have catch a fire. Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So when the coal hit him tongue, the purge him, but he put him on fire. He put him and he ready for service. And then when the question asks, who shall I send? You know, have to draw a straw. In a church today, when we are work for you, we are fear begging and ask people if you draw a straw. But if fire touch your tongue, you volunteer. When fire touch your tongue, you ready for when fire the fire your tongue. 
When you are on fire, person of it beg you. You see, when you're on fire, you don't want nobody to take your place. When you're on fire, you don't want no substitute because you can't have no testimony for you. Somebody, the devil is a liar. When you're on fire, you want to do what you need to do. But you can't know the people who are not on fire. Because they only want somebody else to do it. And find an excuse. You're, you're cool. The cruel, but the God whom I serve, hot, and God want hot people for non presence. And if you and uh, to hold on, and I'm gonna get myself in trouble because some of us we were never really in the presence of God. You come to the service, you spend all that time, and you never tap into His presence. Cool. But Isaiah, let me know say I had people there on God. See that because if you serve a God of fire, you have to be on fire to serve a God of fire. But in a cold touching tongue, and the creator asked, Whom shall I send? Here am I. I'm here for service. I'm here for the instructions. I'm here for whatever you need to get done. Give it to me. But hold on, but hold on. Hold on. I'm about, I'm about to say something that would have contradicted the entire message. God was sending Isaiah to a people that will never change. In a wrong church. In a wrong church. I'm in the wrong church. God was sending Isaiah to go witness to people who had never changed. So listen to this. Isaiah was going to prophesy to a people who will never turn. And then my question is, are you willing to go to do a ministry that even though you do it with everything you have and you feel like you die and the people are not going to change? But hold on. God never run no ring on Isaiah you know, because God tell him to the not going change. Before you send him on the mission. Well, here one of sister gave. Then if they now go to you and hear you, what make you send me? Because God is sending him to prophesy to people. The ministry was not going to be short. It was going to be a long one. And yet they are not going to change. But hold on, I got I got news for you. Lean over your ears, I got to tell you this. God demands from us not success, but faithfulness. Because many of us are preached for success. There might not be any such personal success in your ministry, but remain faithful. God Almighty. I, I'm in trouble because uh, we tend, what is, we tend to equate faithfulness to God. The move of God, the true word of God, with how many people get saved. Hold on. But, but there are churches that have seen people that get saved, you know. And they're not changed. Because there's something the church missing. 
It go, it go right to my head and you miss it. You understand my point. I'm going to say one more time, because the whole church misses it. You, you get it? I have seen churches where full up, filled with people who get saved but not changed. Because all happen, all what happen is just that the church get larger. And they call it success. But God, no one, you must not be preaching for success. So hold on it. So, so hold on it. So, so you can tell me, sir, you come and how many people baptized last month? None. So what you say? Not now go on a church. A lie you are tell. God Almighty, me not trouble. Me not trouble. Because that's the reason why many of us as preachers, we go down in a depression. Me never end up with depression because we are preaching and it look like nothing happened because we are measuring we, what is we are measuring the word the, the, the strength of the word by how many people get saved. And when you don't see the happen, you're seeking God and you say something must be wrong. Sometimes not no wrong, I gotta do it. I'm not like my man, you know what I'm, you know what God wants you to be faithful in what you're doing, it's not the success. So this is all of, all, of, all of us that are leaders, may I tell you now. So I send him to preach. To prophesy to our people, we never change. Lord of mercy. And we get depressed because we know nobody gets saved yet. And I talk about something wrong at church and this must, that, and that. Not, not gossip. A lot of time, nothing not happened. God does want, God does want you to be faithful. Keep on preaching. Keep on preaching. Don't watch the number to believe that something are going on. Keep on preaching. Don't watch the crowd to tell go on. I said, keep on preaching. What he demands is faithfulness and not success. So watch this. He never required Isaiah to convert nobody but to prophesy to them faithfully. So some people might not convert it in a change my prayers. No, I'm in a wrong church. Because we start get slowed down. No, because, lad, because every time I come to church, two months now, three months now, nobody not baptized. Something must be wrong, lad. So we can't bother. And I would not stop. I would not stop. I feel your business. I feel your flat. Tell you now, just remain faithful. God Almighty, and sometimes we're not even faithful enough, and we are cut out. We're not nobody are saved. We're not. We're, we're, we're not. We're not. We're not faithful. No, we are doing. It, but we are watching number and the table. But nobody now saved. Why? Me go find the next church. We go because we're not never now going another church. Yeah. Because because you want to follow the number, and that God called it, God called it to be faithful. Can God find you faithful? Oops, me not trouble the church people. Me, me not trouble the church people. Lord of mercy. Because I'm going to mash up the people, the church people, them theology. Practice and belief. So he sent him. He sent him to prophesy to a people who will never change. And what do you do now when God sent him to do a work? And who are you going to prophesy to? They are not going to change. Can I tell you? We become weary. Can we call it a waste of time? How can it be a waste of time when I got to have your work here? But can you know the problem now, Sister Williams? We are watch with self. We want the glory for ourselves. That is why we that, that, that is why we're feeling like that. Church people are like me, you know. So the number you watch, the question is, are you faithful? So, sorry for really bursting the bubbles. I mean, preaching is so exciting and just dropping it like this. It is my job. I am, I, 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 I am good at spoiling. But Isaiah did his work nonetheless even though he knows nobody now nah, change he never slowed down 
Lord of mercy. He was always at his post. He was always carrying out his assignment. Because it's not about who is going to change or whom you work for. And anytime we put God over self, we will be better at what we do for him. But we are not putting God over self. We are putting self over God. So don't think because other, other churches have people coming in and they, of course a lot of it are God that do it, man. Of course, what you mean? What you mean? But, but don't judge it to say that they are in a better position than others who might nobody save in, in, in three months, four months, one year. You want to hear Isaiah preach for? And not one save and I minister. Tell, tell me, say the prophet now, the good. Eh? God, God just want you to be faithful. When God ready, he will do the increase. What he wants is faithfulness. And if God can find a people in this season who will be faithful. But can I tell you, we are up and we're down. We're up and we're down. We're not faithful. We, don't, we, 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 we can't maintain the self with God. We're up and we're down. We, 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 we just work with feelings and in and we're out. And, and I know that you will criticize me because I kept talking about feelings. But I'm not insensitive. I'm not insensitive, but I don't put my feelings over worship. My feelings don't go over my service to God. You say, even if you see me come at church, maybe if you preach, maybe dead preaching. If I'm my assignment. Yes. All right, sir. Yeah. Don't say that, that is foolishness. Is that right? Me we remain foolish. Yeah, 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 no, some of the people and, and, and God will understand if I stay home today. God will understand if I don't go. But God will understand because I'm putting yourself over God's service. But 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 then but well, but then you're expecting God to move for you. Because guess what we are doing? Many of us as Christians, as people, we are treating God like He's a puppet. Oops, we're not trouble now. I'm in trouble now, Deacon Taylor. Because even though I'm going to feel like I'm going to do it, I'm going to feel like I'm going to do You see, we want God to conform to what we want to do. But we are refusing to measure up to Him. Y'all don't like me. I'm going to say it one more time. We want him to conform. And we are not measuring up. Let, let me help you. There is a standard. And we need to measure up to it. It should not come down to us. But we have a problem measuring up to God's standard. Don't worry, church. Let me see if I can finish. Let me see if I can finish this. Let's go to First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Here we have 1 Peter chapter. First Peter chapter 2. He starts by saying, Wherefore, lay aside all malice. We talk about holiness, church. Lay aside all. You said all malice, not some. But everything to do with malice, lay aside all malice and all guile, hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speaking. I don't have time, church, but I'm just going to run on to verse 9 because that's where I want to part. But let me just tell you, hear what he says? Because we're talking about a, a set apartness, a partness, a holy people. So he said, if you and I are going to be living in holiness, lay aside malice. So why else you now commit adultery and fornication and good at malice? Only oh, you not like me. And now they are going to come and deep practice in the full of it. Envy. 
evil speaking. I understand that evil and I speak a lie and I tell. Let me help you. Know. Evil speaking is not simply also saying that you wish a person died. But when you speak, when you say the wrong thing, you are speaking evil. All right, wrong church. L let me move on. Hear what he says. He now said in verse 2, As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow. All right, many of us misunderstand this, 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 this scripture. You see, I never stay long at verse 1, missionary symbol, because we, that, that is self-explanatory in many ways. But verse 2 says, As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that he may grow. All right, telling a baby, when the baby is born, new baby, you baby want milk. No, look at that word. The word said desire. In the psalm, when David said, as the deer pant after the water brook, he could have said, he could have said, as the deer desire. So that word desire could you be used as the word pant. So as newborn babes, desire sincere milk afterwards. So hear what he's saying. He's saying we must have the behavior as a baby. For the word of God. Like how the child want milk. Alright, well, let me try again. When a newborn baby, man is supposed to have milk to feed the child. Because without the milk, the child is not going to grow and grow strong. The child will be malnourished. And he's saying, we as Christians must have the attitude to the word of God like a newborn baby that desire milk. Let me help you, let me help you. The baby want milk, they can tell us. So the baby not get them if your mother what is. If your mother forget to give the child milk at X time, pick me start ball. Child a throw tantrum. I'm in mean, the wrong church. The, 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 the baby have an attitude because the baby want milk. That's what he must say with the word of God. Church, the church, let me try again because you still miss it. As newborn babes that desire milk. So the church must be to the word of God. You, you must be, Lord have mercy, man. Oh, let me help you. Let me help you. A mother will never stop feeding the baby. Uh, you still miss it. Let me see and get you back. We must be as babes. Newborn babes. He never said as grown up. Because when you grow up, you don't have no desire. Lord have mercy. But he says, so note what he puts us in. He wants, he said, as newborn babes. Because you need to understand, as a baby, a mother needs to feed the child. Because the child wants milk. But then it is not the mother feeding the child in this context. It's the child desiring the milk from the mother. Because in this service, the mother always have milk to give the child. But the problem is, does the child want the milk? But then you need to on But then you must be like a newborn babe who, who, who is to desire. And I tell you that the word desire means pant. So when David said, at the dear elder brown, pant for the water brook, the dear in a trouble. And the dear want water. I told you the dear want water for more than one reason. The dear want water because the dear ran away because it's hiding from his predator. The dear want water to drink because it's thirsty. But then the deer want water for another reason. I wish I had time to do. Because the deer want the water for hiding his scent. Because not only will he drink the water to refresh himself, he may go go in at the water. And his scent going to be hidden from the predator. God Almighty, I'm in the wrong church. So as newborn babe, that desire sincere milk. Can I tell you, I want milk for drink, but me want, sometimes I want milk to wake me up. God Almighty. Me pant after it. Because I don't want to grow wishy washy. I'm in the wrong church. As newborn babes, the baby, newborn baby needs to get milk for grow. That's how we must operate as believers. You can't afford to ignore milk. I wonder why some of us are malnourished spiritually. We're malnourished. 
until we, we are believing fallacies and we are saying fallacies and we are living stupid life because we because what what we should desire for when on our tears feet and the brown we want gerba a locked up loss but you need to understand that the brace is the best no wonder why when they spoke about an El Shaddai they're talking about the breasted one God Almighty because you identify God like to be a woman with breasts come baby suck God did never lack the plus nor Gerber he man no mile in a harlot man made with all of those substitutes but God made the woman with what the child's supposed to get. Breast. And most breasted fed children are better and more brilliant than those who... Don't let me preach. Don't let me preach. Don't shout out loud. Don't let me preach. Children that suck the breast are better than those who take lactoplus and gerber. But we have a church who want lactoplus, who no want Harlix Milo, and who no want Gerber. But me want from the breast. And the only, well, well, let me help you. Anybody can feed with lactoplus and Gerber, but Ungo Mama can give you breast milk. So what mother we do? Mother will leave you with the maid and say, feed him with this. X and Y. And what they have done, what they have done in some cases now, to actually try to wean the child early, it you have the mother to be put in the milk, extract milk, so then cheat the pit for drink from buckle at breast. If you notice the nipple buckle, they are mimic breasts. And who the part on a mimic breast nurse drink from? No wonder when they call it back a nipple. You know, like when you talk to no. them. They mimic breasts. Tell my fool the child. When the child is drinking lactoplus, he believes that mama is my son. I mean, let me soon finish. No, no, I come here deal with the world. But as sincere milk, as newborn babe that desire sincere milk. Let me say it one more time. When the child wants in milk and he can't get in milk, Lord of mercy, in ball. Uno na ball. But after uno take time off on a care. No wonder why David said. When David was running and he couldn't go to the sanctuary for fellowship, David said, when, 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 when he mind, when, when he remember Zion, David said, my heart hurt me. Because I, I, only, I can only remember, I, I, I can only create that thought in my mind because my enemy can't, don't want to allow me to go there. Church, 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 miss it. David, Love a fellowship so much that he had to hurt him when he had to live on memories only. Not now stop me from coming on the enemy now stop us, but we still no come. Oh, we make job stop us. We make feelings stop us. But what did I stop David? An enemy. I remember Zion, Lord of mercy. You know, me feel, you know, I'm going Zion and I can't go because the enemy has prevented me from. As newborn babe, desire sincere milk. When the baby can't get the milk, the baby create tantrum. Pick me ball down the pace. Neighbor for your ox, I kill him, I kill him over there. I know, Lord God Almighty. But I because why? He want milk. Who want milk? Who want milk of the word, man? Who no, who no want no milk of the word? Lord God Almighty. And, and he said, and hold on, man, hold on. You got to understand it because I'm about to mess this thing up now. 
the, the, the later in, in scripture, Paul would have said that we need to move from milk. No. But don't misunderstand it. He never says sincere milk. And when he said that, he was only saying he must grow up. But hold on. But hold on. But that is not contradictory to what he said here in Peter. Because the, the understanding of this in Peter is saying that, I, that, that, that we must be like a child who desire the sincere milk. I won't know to you the newborn babe because he wants us to realize that we cannot live without the word. The child cannot live without the milk. But we must have the desire like a newborn babe that desire the milk. So I pant over the milk so the child can get the milk and never hear the bawling. Call police because they must say I kill the child over there, sir. Because the child have cried. The child, I don't know, easy crying. Child have ball. Pick me a ball. Pick me a ball because pick me can't get milk. Mama, mama, mama is not able to supply milk and the child not happy. Anybody here? That's how we must be like newborn babes. So, as we go in ministry, we must always have that desire. Tell somebody must have that desire. That's what he's trying to tell us. Because you and I will never be holy unless we keep in the word. Is anybody with me? As, let me run on. As you man be a desire to sincere milk of the word, that he may grow thereby. If so, then ye be taste of the Lord's gracious, is gracious to whom coming a living stone, what's this? Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye are also, what's this? Lively stones, a built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Now I'm coming back. Watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to come back to verse 2, rather, verse 4 and 5. To whom come in a living stone. Watch this. The living stone, I tell you real quick, is Jesus. Jesus is considered to be a living stone, right? Disallowed indeed of men, but yet chosen of God. And then now we, ye, also as lively stone so then now we must be like christ i hear the text the text said we are built up in a spiritual house all right look at him and say neighbor you're stone you're you, you stone you're stone you're stone you're stone but no at one point because paul said that we are body of christ we are members peter don't like him to us as stone because we're building a spiritual house and i'm glad mr Smith is here i'm glad he's here because you got to understand as a builder as a builder Let's say you're, you're, build, you're building a building right now. There's some of the things that you don't even understand with building. All right. There are some of the blocks that will go up whole. But there are some blocks you have to shape it. Because you're building a building. And so you need to understand if you're building a block building, you will have to sometimes modify the block in order for it to work. So, for example, so as you build the building, if you end up with a building with a hole, if you know man, that hole and that, that hole needs to be fixed. But then if you notice how the block came, it can't fit in it based upon how the building has been constructed. So I say it again, some work will have to be done. So there are times they take a block and they had the chisel away around to call it the hatchet and chop off and you shape it. The Bible says we are lively stones. Church slow, the church slow. Build it up a spiritual house. Lord of mercy. So then, if we are stone, build up a house. There are some times we have to be shaping how the contractor desire the building to be made for that block to fit. No wonder why sometimes the word feels so hot. You miss where those went. It's because God of you has shaped you. So you can't fit. 
in the structure. I'm, I'm, I'm in the wrong church. The church, the church, the church missed it. Church missed it, church missed it. You are all so lively stones are built up in a spiritual house. So then if you build the spiritual, the house of holiness, some chipping, some cutting off. Because you never ever make a building and all the blocks just fit. Allow me to tell you, a contractor. You could you never make a build. I would love to see the building that Mickey that is made. And you don't know, have a chip of no black. You're going to end up with whole heap of hole. Oops, I, I, I spoke so bad. Right. If you build a building, Sister Simit, Mr. Simit, and you know, you know, you know, modifying under the blocks, you're going to find holes, breaches. I'm trying to find a church. And this church, this church, I can't get it. You're going to find holes, and you're going to find gaps in between. And that will suggest that the building is incomplete. So what you don't see, you see, what you saw, you saw after the building is so made and it rendered and looked good. But then you miss it. Because if you had seen it before they rendered it, you'd have realized, hey, I want peace enough to put here, sir. God at night, I want peace enough to put it. And only the one God for shape on the sun can fit in a spiritual building. In mean, a wrong church. So if you are built, if you are building a spiritual house at lively stones, you need to know that the builder, brother and sister, have to shape you in the design that he wants. Because we end up with some gap, you see. Minister Simit, we end up with some gap, you see. The building end up with some hole, you see. Some kind of shape, you see. You wonder how you get that shape out of that. Lord God Almighty. So then you have to get it black. And chip off. <laughs> I heard a story. I heard a story of a man passing a church where he saw that they were doing some building. But he looked, he saw the builder working on a block. But when he looked, he doesn't see no space where it could fit in. And I said, Where am I chip on the block like that? I mean, what a purpose have been doing? That because when the person looked at eye level, he doesn't see no space for that, for that black they required. This person was just passing and saw this. So he stood watching the gentleman. When he could hold it in the long, I come to ask him. He said, Tell me something. You see, you're working about this along. What the purpose of this? Because I don't see where you can fit here, sir. The man said, No, I'm not up here, so I want you to work. I'm up here, sir. Because there was a place higher. That the person could see, that's where the black was going to be fit. You know, I, then they just missed the message. You don't even realize that while God and work on your dung, yes, sir. If you can't walk your feet up, then I run church. You know, you know, the run church. You know, you must shape your own down here, so Because you could shape it up, what they say, you know. God Almighty, you must shape it up, down here, so So it can fit in up. You know, you, you, know, you know, get it. And if you're going to be a stone to build a building, me say, there are times the builder have to shape you. And sometimes when you get to shape in a people, I watch, them I wonder what make a builder for you go on. So, but they know, and when, them now have the plan in mind. God Almighty, they now have the blueprint. I wish I could preach. And people can't criticize because they don't see the big blueprint. People can't criticize because they don't know what is being built. People who don't have it, the plan can't say anything they want to say, but the builder know what he's doing. God Almighty, that is why he will stay chipping until when he get it, the desired look, then he put it where it's supposed to go. Uh, you know what? Let, let me leave you all alone. Let me leave you all alone. Let me leave you all alone. Go we'll slap somebody and say, Yeah, man, me a bill, me a bill. You see, the, 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 the problem with this building. The problem with this building is that I know you are building up. You're being used to build. Lord of mercy. And that's the trouble right now. Because all along you think, see how you did a build. No, no, are you a part of building? 
I'm in the wrong church. So you, so hold on. But then you are lively stone. So, so and then the problem is then this minister Smith. If you are lively stone, you need more to know where you fit. Because this stone of it fit somewhere, you know. Then the question is, where do you fit? And a dead stone, no. Live the stone. Where do you fit? Because if you were to look at the ministry, at the church, at a spiritual building, and you are a lively stone, the question is, where do you fit? The problem is this. I explained it to you, Missionary Smith. And I said, if you build and use the blocks in their, what is original construct, you go and leave with a lot of gaps. And the building should not have those gaps. The problem is this our church ends up with a of gap. God, if you see a amount of hole in Ebenezer. Because, because some black no want ship. No, some black no want to be shaped to the desired design. To fit. Some gaps. No, no, no. We don't want to shape because from the moment you start being shaped, you start quarrel. You have all kind of problem. And somebody wanted it and pastor and this and that and that. Because you want to be fitted the same way. But you never build a building and all the blocks are fit in its original. Some blocks have been cut off and reshaped in the desired design by the builder. But the thing is this, thing is this, Ivanis Graham, when you finish and you put in the block and you complete the work, Lord have mercy. And when you set it up, nobody no no say. You didn't get so much chip off. Well, honey, the, the, I, I, wanted, I wanted to think that the church is missing. But, dear, the thing that you have missed is this. You don't realize how important you are. Because if we don't chip you off, we're going to end up with a building with wool. You can tell her. The people who are getting chipping see themselves to be less than. And I realize that if them not get the fit, yeah. no matter who those who fit well on in their original design, if you not get chip off and put in other space there, it not going to make them look good. So even the block that needs to be chipped off serves its purpose. In fact, without it, the, the, the building will not get the beauty. So, Lord, so I want to make your phones all by chipping off. Stop it. You're important. You're necessary. I saw that to go. I saw that to go. Please. The text says, built up spiritual house, watch this, and a -N, holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices, watch this, acceptable, because it has to be done so that the spiritual sacrifice that is offered will be acceptable, because there are spiritual sacrifices that are offered that are not If that wasn't important, acceptability would not be here. If everything would have worked, acceptability would not be here. And once you say acceptable, it means that there are some that are unacceptable. Or that are not acceptable. To God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also, it is contained in the scripture, the whole, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. 
I'm in 1 Peter chapter 2 and I just read verse 6. I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. No, I am not a builder and I need to do my investigation to find out if cornerstones are put in buildings and then it's you build there and upon it. Because the corner is suggesting to me, Minister Smith, a corner like that. If the corner not square, the building is not going to be. Lord have mercy. Now try find the church. And let, let, let me say it one more time. If the building not square, if, 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 if the corner not square, the building is not going to be square. All right, you still miss it? Come back, come back, come back. Wherefore also is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Lord have mercy. Don't, don't miss it. You have to have the corner square. If all this corner square, I guarantee you, 90% of the time the building will be square. You know why? Because all they have to do is pick up the line from one corner. God Almighty, another cancer. Because so then as long as the corner square, Lord, 90% will get the building square. Once the builder draw the line from one corner square to the other square corner. Am I right, Minister Smith? Jesus is the chief. And as long as that corner the right, every time you build on it, you get the building. Lord have mercy, me not the wrong church. <clears throat> it's, it's a drive-by, guys, a drive-by. I just wanted to, so watch this. So then, so then that a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him. What's it if you so what are, as long as the corner right and you believe it right and you began to build on it? He ever said here, he shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which disobey the stone. So then if the builder I ignore the line from the corner. Lord of mercy. You know what kind of building we're going to get. You know, that's why many of us are ignore the corner, man. That's why the kind of building we end up with. I wish I had time to preach it. We have to come back to it. But if you trust the cornerstone, Lord God, if you doubt the cornerstone, you start and, and don't work with the plumb line from corner to corner, you go and get a building that is out of line. Well, on, don't worry. I'm, I'm going there. I'm going there. Unto the, verse 7, unto, unto you, therefore, we believe. Which believe? He is precious, but unto them which disobey the stone, which is the which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. Verse eight, and the stone of stumbling, and the rock of offense, even to them which stumbled at the word, being disobedient, where unto also they are appointed. So you will stumble if you do not appreciate the stone. You are trip over it. I'm shot time. You know, no, 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 because time is going. Verse 9. I'm going to stop here. But ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. That he should show for the praise of him. With that call you out of darkness into a marvelous light. But you are a chosen. We pray to say you are a chosen generation. All right. All right. All right. This is, this is Peter in the New Testament. But then, if you were to go to Deuteronomy and go into the Old Testament, you will realize, Elder Brown, that God had chosen a nation in the Old Testament. And that nation was Israel. They were a chosen generation. God looked through and he chose the nation of Israel as a chosen generation. They were a chosen generation. Hear what, hear, hear what the scripture says. But ye are a chosen generation. They were a chosen nation. He said a chosen generation. Please understand. Everybody within Israel were considered to be chosen. But there was a problem as we go. Because Elder Brown, if God chose you, he's going to choose you unto himself. 
and then the problem with this evangelist some people don't want to be to come unto God and can I tell you why they don't come unto God they have a problem to come unto God because they will have to leave some things to come to God you see, you see, you see the, the, the reason why Moses alone had to go on the mountain because the Israelites generally were never interested God would, have, God would want to call them all to him but they were never all interested so go on Moses you go on because you will have to go into his presence which means you'd have to be set apart and the people didn't want to be set apart they want to be same but Peter now remind us ye are a chosen generation uh, watch this watch this Israel was a physical generation but we are a spiritual Israel Elder Brown, you are the physical Israel but now this is the spiritual Israel is anybody with me? I hope I've not lost you. So, so, so you refer to us in the dispensation, even to us that are Gentiles. He said, ye, but ye are a chosen. So then, if you are chosen, it means you're being taken out of. And when you are taken out of, it is simply saying you are being separated. And to be separate means holy. A definition of separate means to be holy. So you are a chosen. No, notice he said generation. You are not, you're not a chosen individual. I wish I can help the church. Which means everybody in your bloodline is supposed to be chosen. But, but, but remember now, we have a problem with the generation chosen. Because some people take God's truth. Uh, God having chosen them for an option. Whilst they were never an option. God chose you, you chose. Go with God. But, but God chose us. We are, we, we, no, we can't, guess what? Because we have to leave some things which we connect to. And we don't want to leave it. We don't, we, we, what's this? We don't want to be chosen. Uh, let, let, me, let me say it over. We want to be chosen with our own criteria. While God have a different criteria for choosing. Because as long as you are chosen, it means you are taken out. So then you are being separated from. So he wants us to know in the dispensation that we are the chosen spiritual Israel. A chosen generation. Watch this now. A royal priesthood. If you notice, Elder Brown, the priesthood, the Abrahamic priesthood was never royal. I'm in church. I'm in church. All right. The, so, so then, the, 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 the Abrahamic Israel, the, 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 the Abrahamic um, priesthood from Aaron, Arianic, was never royal. What we need to understand through Jesus Christ, we have come into a kingdom. So we are in a kingdom. We are a part of a kingdom through Jesus Christ. And because we accept him in our life and the part of the kingdom, that is how we become royal. So we are royal through Christ. So we were chosen in him. And now we are now called royal priest would but, but, but hold on but, but then there is some, there, there's something very disturbing about the priest would because as long as the temple is around the priest duty never ends Lord of mercy church, church, church get silent church get silent as long as the temple is erected the priest's duties never end. Oops. Let me see. Let me We were chosen in Christ, so we have not come into the kingdom. 
we are not just part of a priesthood, but we are royalty. Our priesthood is much bigger and better than that of the Old Testament. Because for, for what they were going to was a foreshadow of what has now come in the New Testament. So, 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 then, so then we are royalty through Christ. I, I do have time. I don't want to come. My time is gone. So then we are royal priesthood. I got to remind you again. As long as the temple is in existence, the priesthood will never stop work. The priesthood exists continually. No, the problem is this. If we are royal priesthood, how you now work? And the priesthood duty never end. When we get it on the way home. So as a priest, you always have work to do. No, that may not trouble. You see how far we have gone from Christendom? You see how far we have gone? Just so far we have gone from Christendom? You're a royal priesthood. What, he said, he said, we are chosen generation. Let's come out to verse 9. We are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. Watch this now. A holy nation. All of this, brothers and sisters, is it kept on reaffirming and in some case repeating or even making clear who we are. So then we are not common. We are holy. Then he went on and said, we are a peculiar. Do you understand that you're peculiar? There's something about peculiarity, ladies and gentlemen. It is uncommon. When you are peculiar, you are un. Tell somebody say me uncommon. I am real. But we're not we're not living the uncommon real life. Brother Dan sisters. But but but, but, hold on, but hold on. But Peter had to be teaching these people in a time when they are being attacked to move out to do the worldly things. He has to be reminding them as to who they are and the lives that they have to live up to. So these four things, he said, chosen generation. He said, royal priesthood. He said, holy nation. And then he said, a peculiar people, which means you are a different kind of people. So these are the four privileges that we, brothers and sisters, has received or has had the opportunity to move into because of the kingdom that we have come into which is governed by Jesus Christ so then if we are this what's it chosen generation royal priesthood holy nation a peculiar people he now said that in a show for the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into a marvelous light what is he saying he's saying live up to who Live up to him. Live up to the one. You are chosen. You have been called out. So you can show forth the praises of him who had brought you. So we need to understand that we are, we are not common people. Even though we live around common people. Oh, what's this? Brothers and sisters, we need to take our spiritual life to another level. We are watered down Christendom to fit culture. When I realize it that we're doing, we are watered down to fit culture. The new style now, we're out there, the church wants the new style. You know what I say? We are watered down to fit the culture. A lot of things that we are doing, I was never part of your church a culture you're adapting it from the world and want to bring it into the church and say nothing wrong with it no something is wrong the church is a peculiar place for a peculiar people we can i use a colloquial term i did before we must talk out like a sore thumb we when people see us they must want to say what that then then i want then i want so I told you last week, I told us last week as we shared the word that you need to let people know and say, no, 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 you are for special use. Amen. Amen. 
you and I are for special use. We are not common. Our, so then our praise is not common. Our attitude towards God, you know, everything we do to God, but then said, should never be common. Stand, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. It should never be common. We are not common. So I want this church. Let us stop watering the thing down to fit other people. Let us stop bringing it to a level so that it can be accommodating. It should never be accommodating. It should never be. It's not accommodating. There's a level and a standard. It's interesting. Missionary Smith will tell you, you want to go in her line of work, there's a criteria. There's a criteria for almost every official profession. And watch this. You're not going to get through unless you meet the criteria. Lord have mercy. You can, you can dream about it. You can hope about it. You can wish about it. But you have to meet the criteria in order to be a part of it. But we want to deal with Christendom and ignore the criteria. It requires holiness. Criteria, holiness. Tell somebody the criteria, holiness. Peculiar, different. If they want rear, stuck out like a swift thumb. Brothers and sisters, I want us to know that God loves us enough that He will bring us into royalty. He loves us enough that He allowed Christ to come and die so that we could be reclaimed, to embrace Him and to live the life that's necessary and important so that we can inherit eternal life. Brothers and sisters, if there is a heaven to gain and there's a standard for heaven, we'll have to fit the standard here before we can go up there. And the truth be told, if you don't make it this one here, Lord of mercy, let me, let me tell you. I, I, I wish I was in the right church. So then, if, so then, you can look at me to be hard and that I am preaching a hard message, but then you want to go into a holy heaven. You have to hold yourself for a gang there. It's as simple as that. So then I could never be preaching something that is hard and difficult. If you are thinking about praise and that in heaven you never stop praising, and say, say you can't stop now. This is that dress rehearsal. You know what? Because I've heard many of us said, like, there are some things to be done in church. I've said, Pastor, I know where you say, Pastor, because any time the church fix up, may I go do this and may I go do that, you're not going to do it at all. If you're not practicing it, no, you are never going to do it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Father, where you saying, man, because I'm the first one to do this. If you're not doing it, no, you are never going to do it. But we, but, but, but we, we, we fool ourselves with all these little thoughts and little cliches and these little mindset to comfort ourselves in remaining what's this without true value but I have a Bible for you I have a Bible for you I have a Bible for you he said if we can be faithful with you I will make you rule so if you, 
Don't tell me when the menu come. No, 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 no. Work with the food now. And that's why many of us are not faithful in ministry. Because we can't handle the food. We are waiting for a bigger building. I'd be more comfortable when I can worship God better. I lie, you are tell. You might not even show up. I ain't lying. I'm telling you. Because that's your heart. Because if you really appreciate God, you work it where you have now. You say your work, you have no. But, oh, no, man, no, man. You, you're going to see me a bit. Oh, Pastor, I'll be the one to do this. And I'll be done. No, 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 no. You are just lying to yourself. You are just trying to feel comfortable saying what you have said, but not, 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 there's no truth in what you say. Because you, the same attitude you have now, is the same attitude you're going to have then. Because the last time I check, his practice becomes perfect. And whatever you're practicing now, that's where you're going to be then. Oops, I just burst somebody's buckets. Because, because we, we want to deal a fit. No man, go to Burger King. And when you are ordered, you can tell them you don't want no mayonnaise. Tell them you don't want no lettuce, kind of like it. Tell them you don't want no tomato. Tell them you don't want no cheese. No. You're, you're getting it your way. When you come on to God, you take it how he has it. Because when you want him to take out the... When you want him to remove the cheese, I remove the lettuce, you are telling him that how he package it is not enough. And you are trying for the great God who is perfect and know all things to alter his menu to fit your liking. Then you are saying that you are imperfect. Where well, you did never make sense. Well, you never, what you did has flaws. Because I don't eat cheese. So if I were to buy a burger, I keep attending to no cheese. God knows me no want no cheese already. So he never give me. He knows that cheese is not good for me. So in that package of the burger, he never give me no cheese. So if you're telling me to take out the cheese, it means he know what you really want. And, and I thought he knew all things. But, no, but, but if he knew all things, he missed this then. We want to create a kind of Christianity that fit our liking, that we don't have to make any change to. We don't have to make any alteration in order to embrace it. No, no adjustment, and, I mean, and he's okay with it. The devil is a liar. Hold on to somebody's hand. Let me let you go. Sorry, I, I kept you long, and I did not respectfully greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Forgive me. But brothers and sisters, we should be different people. And I'm not going to stop preaching it. I won't be rude in my delivery. I'll give it to you the kindest way. And I will never be angry at you. I'll smile and make you know the truth just the same. Because it is what it's supposed to be. Because you and I need to know it's not I did it my way. We miss, the scripture said, we are a royal, we are chosen unto God. We are not our own. You don't own yourself. I don't own myself. And we are living like we own yourself. That's why we choose to go, we choose to come, we choose to say, we choose to do. Because we are behaving as if we rule ourselves. But we belong to the Lord. As your holy that had I wanted to be praying for your neighbor. Lord, make me over. Make me over again. Make me over again. Make me over again. I want to be holy. I want to be true. Oh God, make me over again. Hallelujah. Make me over again. Oh God, there's so much power in this room. Only if we just ignite. There's so much that we can do. Oh God, help us, help us, Lord. 
make me over again. Hallelujah. Make me over again. Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. Lord, I worship you. I magnify your name. We come to you even now. Oh God, forgive us. Oh God, we've been foolish in many things that we have done. But we ask you, oh God, just to touch us. Help us, Father, that we'll recognize who you are and live for you. You are worthy to be praised. We honor you, Lord. We lift you up. We magnify your holy name. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. We lift up even now. We pray, God, that have you have your way in my life. Through me, through us. For all those that show shall need that this today, we pray, God, that you touch their lives likewise. Oh, God, every backslider, touch them, oh, God. Help us not to be foolish in the life that we are living. To believe that we have time, oh, God. We don't control how long we live and what we'll do. But help us, God Almighty, to submit to your word. Oh, my God, because that's the truth. There's no other way. Help us, God Almighty, that we should stop believing the lies that the enemy is whispering in our ears to tell us so that we think we have enough time and we can do whatever we do it doesn't take but i pray right now god almighty that the people be plucked from the hands of the adversary oh my god all those that are to be saved i pray that they will receive your word even now and make immediate changes to their life we make changes to our diet when we are satisfied that what we are eating is not good let us make changes even right now to our spiritual life so that god almighty we will be transformed hallelujah but conform to the word of god have your way we pray we thank you for hearing us today bless your people near and far provoke us in the name of jesus christ that we will move to serve you you call us to be holy oh i'm just trying to be holy i'm just working to be holy let your will be done help us that we will leave you with a different mindset oh my god one that will never change we'll never forget who we are but even now and then god we are like people who look at ourselves in a mirror but the moment we turned away we forgot what we look like but remind us what we look like who we are that we will never forget you even when we leave from the sanctuary we'll never forget you doesn't matter what hour of the day have thine own way now we pray let your will be done in your name jesus we tell you thanks and we honor you we honor you we bless you we worship you oh god thank you for bringing me into royalty thank you for bringing me into royalty thank you for bringing me into royalty hallelujah let my life please you lord hallelujah 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 we thank you we thank you we thank you hallelujah 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 oh hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, my father's children. Hallelujah. 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 I'm the Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I know we have. Please forgive me. I might have given you too much to eat because we ran from Isaiah chapter 6 to 1st Peter and please forgive me I know there's a lot that I might have crammed into you at such a short time and we, we never exhaust the text I just try to hit some points there and there some salient point that I think that we have been jumping over we've been shifting and we have a different mindset concerning because the body of Christ have got to be watched sister fitly joined.
together. Because Elder Brown, there can be a dry if it's not fitly going to be in trouble. Hallelujah. Come on, someone say fitly join. Fitly. Fitly join. Has to be properly joined. Because you can be, Elder, you, could, you could join the left hand on the right side. You join, you know. But you know, fit. I'm in the wrong church. I said, you could put on a left foot where the right supposed to be. It join, but it no fit. I, I, I wish I had a church. So then we have to be fitly join. And it had to be done. And brothers and sisters, we don't have much time in which to do many things. So we have to capitalize on the time that we have to get it done. And there's so much that it didn't need that I want to deposit to us. And time is going and I have to just get it done whenever time and privilege to do so. So it is Women's Sunday. I will invite um, Ivan Slow to come back and she will do the benediction. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God thanks for the word. We stretch our hands towards our pastor. And we place a blessing upon him. And we pray God's strength upon him continuously. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And give God thanks for his faithfulness. As he delivers the word of God unto us day after day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify God and bless his holy name. And give God thanks for his mercy and his grace towards us and pray that he will continue to feast at the feet of jesus christ of nazareth glory to god and be faithful unto him and the lord continue to strengthen him and to bless him and so we say this afternoon that the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, even now and forevermore. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yo! Why are we smiling so hard? Because it's another time for us to gather. Somebody type in the comments, I know his name is wonderful. Everybody right here. All of my vows, I've never known you to fail You remain the same man, wonderful is your name All of my life, I've never known you to fail You remain the same man, wonderful is your name